On BBC Two shortly, Malcolm, a droll and highly successful Australian comedy, being shown for the first time on British television. On One in Half an Hour, Panorama investigates the Nazi hunters and the problems of finding the evidence 40 years on. Panorama is at 9.30. Now, the 9 o'clock news with Martin Lewis. 36 die in a South London train crash. Some who survived that were killed when a third train hit the wreckage. Tonight, British Rail have accepted full responsibility. Good evening. At least 36 people were killed and more than 100 injured in this morning's train crash at Clapham Junction in South London. Two commuter trains carrying more than 1,300 passengers collided shortly after 8 o'clock. A third train ran into the wreckage. Many passengers were trapped for several hours before they could be freed. The Prime Minister has promised a full public inquiry. The collision involved the 718 from Basingstoke to Waterloo and the 614 from Poole, which today started from Bournemouth because of track problems. Both trains were about to pass through Clapham, Europe's busiest railway junction. The Basingstoke train was slowing down for signals when the Bournemouth train, probably travelling at over 40 miles an hour, ran into the back of it. Shortly afterwards, an empty train leaving Clapham Junction ran into the wreckage, killing some of those who just escaped from the first crash. Neil Bennett reports. The collision could hardly have happened at a worse time or a worse place. One of the busiest stretches of track in the world at the peak of London's rush hour. Up to a thousand commuters were packed into the two trains from Hampshire. The collision sent carriages hurtling into the air, coming down in a twisted contortion of wreckage. A cameraman from the London Fire Brigade took these first pictures at the scene as rescue services began to pick through the debris for survivors. Medical teams went into the carriages to give immediate treatment to the most seriously hurt. Operations were carried out on the spot. In some cases, limbs had to be amputated before people could be got out and away to hospital. Passengers with appalling injuries were manoeuvred as gently as circumstances would allow. Stretchers then had to be moved inch by inch over and around the wreckage to waiting ambulances. Rescuers had to negotiate a steep and slippery cutting to get to the road above. Passengers, still in their seats, waited for help to arrive. Shock and confusion etched on their faces, they sat by the track wrapped in blankets. There was constant encouragement from rescuers, for men and women whose routine journey to work had been halted on this Monday morning by such a dreadful accident. Passengers from carriages which escaped the full impact were able to walk away, though in obvious shock and distress. Others were taken to a nearby school for first aid treatment. Survivors spoke of their experiences. There's just an almighty bang, and um, you know, people were everywhere. It was very, very strange. People were just uh, stunned, I mean, sort of mentally stunned. You know, most people stayed in the train. Where'd you work? Oh, it's just full. It always is. I mean, full and standing. And the yeah. woman was trapped with metal on her. And, you know, it was, oh, it's just, it was terrible. I, I mean, we're dead lucky to be alive. The trains crashed near a bridge where there was comparatively easy access from the road. Passers-by were quick to offer assistance. But I saw a man being thrown up, so I came there, I saw everybody running there. So I just joined in, went down, went over the trains, and in the gap between the two trains, there was this mass devastation. Just a, I've never seen anything like it in my life. While there was still hope of reaching people alive, firemen cut into the tons of metal, disentangling it piece by piece. But as the hours passed, it was apparent they'd be finding more bodies than survivors.